Hello again. In this video, I'm going to discuss the stages of derivation construction in our strategy. And that's stages in our strategy, not stages in the definition or rules of what a derivation is. And then I'm going to discuss why subderivations work. So there are three stages of derivation construction. The, what you want to be remembering always is you're always looking to box and cancel. That's your ultimate goal is to box and cancel the show line. And if you're working in a subderivation, it's your your goal is always to box and cancel that subderivation to get you back to the point where you can box and cancel the main line. So you always want to be thinking, can I box and cancel? Can I box and cancel? Can I box and cancel? And it's always, if I'm trying to show a conditional, have I got the consequent? And no matter what, have I got what I'm trying to show or have I got a contradiction? So always be thinking, could I box and cancel directly with, have I got what I want to show? Can I box and cancel indirectly because I've got a contradiction? Or can I box and cancel uh, conditionally if I have the consequent? Okay, so that said, three stages of derivation construction. First, there's a setup. So we always show the conclusion and make an assumption. And then if we get into the show consequence cycle, where if we're trying, if, if what we were trying to show is a conditional, then we'll say show the consequent. If the... Um, uh, right, and then we'll always we'll make another assumption, and then we repeat this process. So and then we think, oh, so I've I show the conclusion, I make an assumption, and then if what I was trying to show the initial show line was a conditional, then I'll say show consequent and make another assumption, and now I'm in a subderivation, and I look again, oh, is that this subderivation what I'm trying to do is itself the subderivation? Am I trying to show a conditional? If so, I'll say show consequent again and make an assumption, and then look. Is this, I'm now in a second subderivation, am I trying to show a conditional still? And if the answer is yes, then again I'll say show consequent and make an assumption and then look. And at some point I will no longer be trying to show a conditional and then this cycle stops. So that's the setup stage. Show conclusion, assumption, and then keep doing show consequent and assuming as long as you can um, until you can't do show consequent anymore. Second stage is inference rule application. We're particularly interested in modus ponens or modus tollens applications with each of our conditionals. And once you've done modus ponens or modus tollens with a conditional, you've used it up and you won't need to use it again, at least not with modus ponens or modus, not as the, the large premise in a modus ponens or modus tollens, not as the conditional premise in the modus ponens or modus tollens. And then if you're stuck, you do a subderivation. And we've talked about what sort of subderivations to do. There's, uh, there's always show consequent, but then there's show unneg for indirect that allows you to do an indirect derivation once you've completed it, and show ant or show unneg if you have an unused conditional. So I want to say a little bit about why subderivations are sort of in general a good strategic idea. So we'll have an example. So let's say we have this argument: if p then q is our premise. And if q then r only if if p then r is our conclusion, and this their argument is derivable, so we'd start off by saying show the conclusion, show if q then r only if if p then r, and we make an assumption for a conditional derivation. Now at this point we want if p then r for a conditional derivation, but what we have we can't get. We can't get to if p then r just using rules because we could write down if p then q, but then we just have if p then q and if q then r and nothing to do. So we would observe that, well look, um, we could show if p then r instead of trying to infer it. A subderivation fundamentally is something you want to get. And one way to get it is to get it using derivation or inference rules. The other way is to get it using a subderivation because once you're done with uh, completing the subderivation, uh, you'll have if p then r. So you can think there are two ways I can get a sentence. One is infer it. The other is uh, box and cancel a show line that contains it. And those are fundamentally the two ways to get new things into your derivation beyond the premises. So you want to think of some derivations as in a way it's like, well, I get to choose what inference rules uh, I'm going to use. Of course, you have to actually complete the subderivation, So it has to be wisely chosen. But you think, what do I want? I, I could get anything. What, what would be helpful? And so that's you have to think about that. But that that's part of the point. So... Okay, once you say show if p then r, okay, so, so, sorry, so to box and cancel show if p then r, we need r, we can't, without 
we're still not going to be able to get anywhere except if we make an assumption for a conditional derivation. And when you write a new show line, you get to make that new assumption. And then you can go ahead and apply your inference rules. We'll do uh, modus ponens with P and the premise, which gives us Q, and then Q in line 2 when modus ponens gives us R, which is what we're looking for. And so it's the assumption that lets us get to what's going to let us box and cancel line 3 with CD, because that's what we just got. And now that we've got line, we've boxed and canceled line 3, we can box and cancel the whole thing, because that's the consequent of line 1. So the, the there are two things to think about when you're thinking about subderivations, or to understand what's going on with them. On the one hand, if you uh, it's a thing that if you could show it, then that will help you complete the, the derivation. But why should you be able to show it? Well, because you get to make an assumption, and the assumption helps you complete that subderivation. The assumption doesn't help you with the main derivation. You might be thinking, oh, I'm stuck. If I do a subderivation, then I'll get to make an assumption, and then I'll get to do more things. And that's not entirely wrong, but it's a little bit misguided. You do a subderivation because once you're done with it, you can use it in completing the, the main derivation. You don't do the subderivation in order to make an assumption. You do the subderivation because once you're done with it, it's going to help you. But when you do introduce a show line, then you get to make an assumption, and the assumption will help you do the subderivation. So when you choose a derivation wisely, a subderivation wisely, you're choosing a um, a, a line that, on the one hand, is going to help you get help you in the main derivation, and it's going to be there's going to be a good assumption you can make on it that will help you do the sub complete the subderivation. So as I was saying before, one way to get sentences to infer it with the inference rules. Another way to get a sentence is to box and cancel a show line with it, and that's, in other words, to do a subderivation of it. So you can either infer sentences or do subderivations of them. But we need to remember that what we need to box and cancel the show line of square is not what we need to infer square. And it, right because our box and cancel lines are the way box and cancels indirect, conditional, or if you happen to get it on a line directly. But the point is when you uh, you can write down the line it, when you can box and cancel the show line without actually having gotten the square anywhere uh, in your derivation. So in that way, it's a different way to get uh, the sentence. So if you choose the right thing to do a subderivation and make an assumption on the one hand, even though you can't infer square, you'll get what you need to show bo to box and cancel the show line of square because the assumption you'll get to make will help you do the boxing and canceling. So that's why subderivations work. You choose the right one, then on the one hand, it'll help you complete the main derivation. On the other hand, because you get to make an assumption, you'll be able to box and cancel the show line. So that's what you want to be, sort of have that, that in your head that uh, I do the subderivation to help me with the main derivation. The sub subderivation is a new way to get a sentence, and I'm doing it to help me in the main derivation. But because I can make an assumption, and because I have box and cancel rules, it's effectively a new way to. It's I, I, it gives me more flexibility, more ways to get a sentence than just the inference rules. Okay, so that's why subderivations work. And remember the three stages of derivation construction: the setup with show the conclusion, assume C D. Or uh, sorry, not assume CD. Show the conclusion, make some sort of assumption. If it's conditional, assume CD, and then do the show consequent cycle. So show the consequent, assume CD. If if you're trying to initially trying to show a conditional, then show its consequent and make an assumption. And if it's still a conditionally trying to show, repeat that process. Eventually, that ends. Second stage: make your inference rule applications in particular modus ponens and modus tollens. And then finally, uh, if you're stuck, you do a subderivation. So. Uh, in the next uh, little video, I'm going to talk about the notion of relevance and how it relates to validity, and we'll see that there are ways in which we might think that the premises of an argument should be relevant to the conclusion, but we'll see that in some ways in our system, that doesn't always happen. So we'll talk about that.